Hi, and welcome. So today in this video, we're going to be talking about calculating nominal and effective interest rates. So uh, I'm briefly going to explain the types of interest rates, how they're connected. Uh, I'm going to show you how the formulas derive in terms of how we get to one, how do we get to calculate one interest rate from another. And I'm going to do a few examples. So let's get started. Okay, so for a nominal interest rate, it is the quoted or stated rate per annum on which the compounding is based for a given compounding period. So for example, 4% compounded quarterly, where the 4% is the interest rate per annum, but the compounded quarterly makes it a nominal rate, right? Without the compounding, it's just a regular rate. Now, as of effective interest rate, it is the interest rate per annum that takes a compounding into account, right? For example, nominal rate compounded annually is equal to an effective interest rate. Now, with the given compounding frequency between the nominal and effective rate, the effective rate would result in the same future value as nominal rate or nominal rate would result in the same future value as the effective rate if the compounding frequencies are the same. So what we can say is that why are they important, right? Why are effective rates important or why are nominal rates important? The, re the reason why they're important is because they're used to compare the interest rates between loans and investments that have different compounding periods. We'll go through an example later on in the video that shows you why they're important and how you can compare the two rates. So let's have a quick look at how to calculate effective interest rate. Okay, so here in this example, we see that Kobe's investing $1,000 for one year at 10% per annum, compounded semi-annually. Calculate the effective interest rate for Kobe's investment. So now before we even begin, we know that we have a future value question here. We don't really need to calculate the effective interest rate in order for us to find the answer. We already have the information given to us to find the value of our investment at end of one year. So what we can do is we can simply just take the nominal interest rate or the future value equation and we can convert it into a nominal, nominal format where we have future value is equal to present value into one plus I over M where M is your compounding frequency and I is your interest rate per annum and take the M times T where your M again is your compounding frequency and T is your time period. We can simply just take this equation and we can substitute the amounts given to solve for our final investment value for Kobe. And we get that the final investment value for Kobe is going to equal at the end of one year, $1,102.50. What we know is that this value is going to be the same for the effective interest rate if we use an effective interest rate because the, we're going to include the compounding in that question, right? We're going to include the compounding frequency in that effective interest rate. So what we can state is that if we have an effective interest rate equation, which is future value is equal to present value into one plus I or I1 to the power of N or N1, whatever, however you like to write it. Right, we can just write that and we know that it's going to equal $1,102.50 because we're going to include the compounding frequency in this I1. So what we can do is we can simply just plug in the plug in the variables that are given to us and see what we're left with, right? So we're again for we're 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 putting in the 1000 that Kobe's investing, and we're putting in for the time period that she's investing it for, which is one year in this case. And it's one year, it's not being compounded by anything. So it's just one year. Now we don't have an I1, right? We need to solve for I1. Now these two equations are practically equal to each other. So what we can do is just set the equations equal to each other and solve for I1, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So if we set the future value of effective interest equals to the future value of nominal interest, if we set the two equations equal to each other, we can simply isolate for I1. And I've already plugged in the variables that are given to us where $1,000 was being invested, present value for one year, 1,000, nominal interest rate was 10% per annum, 
compounded semi-annually, and then two times one, which is your compounding frequency multiplied by time period. And now what we're simply going to do is just isolate for I1. The first thing you have to do is you can solve this side of the equation and you get this. If you plug it into the calculator and solve it, you get this answer. We've done that in the previous question. So you get that answer. Now the next step you have to do is just divide each side by 1000, right? And we get 1.025, right? So once we do that, now the second part is take a root to get rid of the, there's power exponent one. We have to take a root of one on both sides. So it wouldn't do anything, but just it wouldn't do anything on either side because we're just taking root of one one on this end. But in this case, it's going to get rid of the one divided by one. So it's just going to get rid of that. You can just simply write it as one plus i. It still has a one there, but technically it's gone for now, right? So now what we can do is just subtract it on this side of the equation. Move the one plus right one that is in the plus side. Subtract one on each side, and we're left with zero point one two five. Now, if we multiply this by 100 to get to the interest rate, we get a 10.2% effective interest rate. So this interest rate is your per annum interest rate, and it's effective interest rate, effective annual interest rate. So now we can check our formula to see if it works out, right? So we know that our effective interest rate formula is future value is equal to present value into one plus effective rate to the power of N1, right? So $1,000 is your investing amount that Kobe is investing into 1 plus 10.25%, which is the compounded, uh, sorry, which is the effective interest rate to the power of 1. And it gives you $1,102.50. So there we go. It works out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to solve. There's no way that we're going to go through this equation again, over and over again, right? This is too long. So what we can do is we can set the equations equal to each other and find out a common equation that we can use to solve for the for the final variables. So we're going to set the variables equal to each other and just isolate for i1. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, we're going to generate an effective interest rate formula, right? Where we're set the future value of uh pre where we're, we're set the future value of effective interest rate equals to present value into 1 plus i1 to the power of n1, and then this side is pv into 1 plus i over m the power of mo times t. Now, before we move ahead to simplify this equation process, I'm going to change some variables and I'm just going to make them just modify them and just label them as different variables. So what we can do is just label n1 as t for now. We're going to leave it as n1. We're going to label that. That's, remember that that's your time period, so we're just going to leave it as t. Where your i over m is, remember that's, we're going to change this to i2 for now so that we can simplify it a little bit easier. And where your m time t is, we're going to change that to n over 2. So we're going to have something like pv is equal to 1 plus i1 to the power of n1. We haven't changed it to t yet. Is equal to pv of i2 to the power of n2. This just simplifies a little bit for us so that we can get to the nitty and gritty of it. You know, we can, we have an easier time formatting the whole equation, getting to the right, correct equation, easier form. So let's do that. So the first thing is we divide each side by PV, right? And once we do that, we're going to be left with 1 plus I to the power of N1 is equal to 1 plus I2 to the power of N2, right? This is your nominal interest rate. So now we're looking to solve for effective interest rate. So what we're going to do is take a root of N1 on this side so that we could get rid of this exponent. and take a root of, if we do it on one side, we have to do it on the other. So when we do that, we're going to be left with, this root is gone. So we're going to be left with n2 divided by n1. Practically, you can write this root form as an exponent of n2 divided by n1. That's how it's written in exponent form. So once we do that, what I've done is subtracted one on each side, right, as shown. And I've also plugged back in the m times t for n2 and t for time period. And what we can do is just simply just cross out the t's and you'll be left with the final equation that would get you from that would get you from a nominal interest rate to an effective interest rate, which would equal to this is your effective interest rate that you're calculating with one plus i2 to the power of m minus one, where your i2 is going to equal i over m, right? So this is how you come up with an effective interest rate equation. Now let's see if we can do something for nominal interest rate. In terms of what I mean is that 
if we can calculate the effective interest rate equation, we can also calculate a nominal interest rate equation. We just have to, in that case, we'll just have to solve for i too. Let's go ahead and. Okay, so here we're going to calculate the nominal interest rate formula. Previously, we calculated the effective interest rate formula. Now we're going to calculate the nominal interest rate formula. Same format. We're going to set the two equations equal to each other, but this time around, we're going to isolate for i over m or i too. Right, and uh, we're gonna solve for i too. So same process. We're gonna label n1 is equal to t, i over m is equal to i2, and m times t is gonna equal it to n2. So we're just gonna plug these into the equation, except for i1. We're gonna plug that at the end of the equation, right? So when we do this, we're left with uh, pv is equal to one plus i, two to the power of n2 is equal to pv into one plus i to the Power of n1. Same same process. Divide it PV on each side. So you're left with one plus i2 to the power of n2 is equal to one plus i1 to the power of n1. Now we're isolating for i2, so we're going to take a root of n2 on each side, and we're going to be left with one plus i to the power of n over one divided by n over two, right? Because we took a root of n2 on each side now we can simplify this a little bit farther or we're just going to write it as just subtract one on each side and we're going to write it as t which is your n1 divided by t times m or m times t however you like to write it you can do that and uh, your final equation is going to equal for calculating a nominal interest rate from an effective interest rate would equal i2 is equal to 1 plus i1 to the power of t, your time period, multiplied by comp compounding frequency for nominal interest rate that you're trying to calculate for, and multiply that by the time period for the nominal interest rate that you're trying to calculate for, and subtract it by 1. This should, this should give you the nominal interest rate from an effective interest rate. Right. So now let's look at the example and see if we can use our effective interest rate to calculate the the rate that we want to calculate for nom uh, for Kobe without having to go through that tedious process of each step of calculating the setting the two equations equal equal to each other and calculating the final answer. So uh, with that said, the equation is for effective interest rate I1 is equal to one plus I2 to the power of m minus 1. This was our effective interest rate equation that we calculated earlier in the video. So we're just going to take our variables that are given to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to just format a little bit where we have i over m, which is your interest rate per annum, divided by your compounding frequency to the power of your compounding frequency, right? So our interest rate per annum was 10%. 2 is our compounding frequency. Right, two is compounded semi-annually to the power of two. So you see this time around, we did not include the 1,000 that she's investing, nor did we multiply that by one time period because it's 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 a repetitive process. We don't need to include that. And we can simply use this equation now that we arrived at to simply just solve for what the answer is going to be. So I've included that there. And now when we format the equation, we get that one plus zero five is part of the bracket right when you divide uh when you take 10 divide 10 percent 10 percent divided by 2 plus 1 is going to give you 1.05 and you put that to the power of 2 minus 1 would give you 1.1025 and they just subtract 1 from there you get the rate of 0 0.1025 multiply that by 100 and you get the rate 10.25 percent effective rate right so that's your effective annual rate 10.2 percent compounded annually this is your compounded annually rate okay so here we have an option that states that kobe has two options for investing her money bank a offers five percent compounded annually or bank b offering 4.5 percent compounded quarterly which one should she use we actually have an option solving this question uh, we can either convert the bank a option offering five percent compounded annually to a nominal rate or bank B offering 4.75% compounded quarterly to effective annual rate, right? So if we we can either choose one or the other. Uh, I have done an example 
in the or like earlier I did an example where we're converting it to an effective rate. So in this case, we're going to convert a effective rate to a nominal rate. So we're going to use the equation I2 is equal to 1 plus I1 to the power of T over M times T minus 1, right? We can also write this equation as I2, which is I over M, is equal to 1 plus I1 to the power of T into M times T minus 1, right? You can write it either way. Uh, so with that being said, let's plug in the, the amount that we have, right? So we have that 5%, which is compounded annually. Time period is unknown, but we're just going to say that it's for one year, right? And uh, the amount that she's going to invest or she's looking to invest is for one year. So she's going to assume that it's one year. If if not, you can either assume whatever amount you want. But remember, this time period is going to equal this time period as well, right? So the amount that she's going to be investing for in the compounded nominal rate, which is also going to equal to each other. So we know that. And we know that we're trying to convert the rate to a frequency of compounded quantity. So we have the 4% that we want to convert it to. And the time period we're going to convert it to is for one year as well. So this 1-1 one, one is just practically going to cancel out. It's going to be 1 over 4. So we're going to be left with 1 plus 5% to the power of 1 over 4 minus 1. If we simplify this farther, we get 1.0110122722234. Subtract 1 on each side. Well, sorry, subtract 1 from it. And we're left with 0 0.01 to 2734. And then what we have here is our nominal rate per annum, right? So I2, so practically this, if I, I've solved this part of the equation and I've practically received, got, received or gotten the answer of 0 0.01227 which is your nominal rate per annum. What, what about the M here? right? I still have to take that into account. So the M here in this case is compounded quarterly. So I have to take this rate and multiply it by four, which is a compounded quarterly, in order to compare the two rates correctly. So I'll take that rate and multiply it by the compounding frequency of four, and I arrive at the rate of 4%, 4.9%, 088372, so four, approximately 4.9%, right? Which is higher than the compounded quarterly of compounded quarterly of 4.75%. So what we can say is that Kobe should go with bank A because it offers a higher return, right? Interest rate is higher and she gets a better return on it. Now, what I'm trying to explain to you here is that if this said borrowing the question would be the answer would be other way around because in that case bank b is offering a better rate because she has to kobe has to pay less of an interest in this case she's investing she's going to receive more money right she has to pay she's going to get more interest income in that case she's going to have less of an interest expense right so that's why you have to understand the question before you start solving it anyways uh, that's it for the explanation of calculating interest rates for nominal and effective. If you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Consider checking out other videos if you have problems, issues with annuities or compound interest. And uh, do consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you.